Hello, Virgo. It's a gentle reading for the sign of Virgo. Um, Virgo, um, it is wonderful to have you here. Welcome to this space. And um, I am um, so pleased to be here as well. I am excited to bring this message forward for you, this um, information forward for you. But before I do, I want to like to rely, I would like to remind um, each and every one of us, um, myself included, um, that we are all different people. Um, we are all born of different backgrounds in different cultures. We've had different experiences. We have very different personalities from each other and that um, you will all receive this information in a different way. And it may fit for some of you and it may not fit for others of you. And I ask you to please um, use that compass within you um, to discern what guidance is um, good for you to receive and what guidance is meant for someone else. Um, so let's go ahead and start. I will shuffle and then we'll get right into the reading after that. Um, let's look at the present energy, the current situation for this group of Virgos. All right, so we have the Seven of Pentacles here. We have the Queen of Pentacles, the Tower Energy, and the Ten of Wands. Um, with the Seven of Pentacles, um, we, we do have an energy of investment, investing in the future, investing in self. The Seven of Pentacles is about our reality and what I, when I say the word reality, I mean um, how our life is and what we experience in our everyday um, journey, um, what we experience at work or what we experience at home, um, what our um, duties and obligations are and what brings us joy in, in an everyday kind of way. So with the Seven of Pentacles, there is an energy now of really looking at um, how best to invest in oneself, um, how best to bring oneself or one's journey into a place that can um, help propel you into the future. So this is um, an energy of looking um, within and um, investing in um, yourself or your training or your life. Um, there are many ways that you can say it or that you consider it, um, but investing in oneself so that there can be future return, so that there can be improvement, so that there can be enhancement in your journey, because ultimately this group of people is looking for a sense of stability, a sense of uh, protection in their life, a sense of shelter. Um, that is what earth energy does. It is um, creating a foundation um, which helps us to um, build a strong home and a um, healthy bank account and have those resources around us that can help um, us feel safe and secure and stable what, whether life is wonderful or whether life is challenging. So it is an energy that helps us weather the storm. It helps us um, make our way through rough patches in our life. And so with the Seven of Pentacles energy, it talks about a focus now with this group of people to really hone in on what can be done, what, what can be done, what actions can be taken, um, what um, investments that can be made in one's life to help bring um, more structure and more stability in. Um, this is investment in oneself. Um, now, this could be investment also in a business or in something that you're doing to, to bring in abundance for yourself, to bring in stability for yourself. So it doesn't have to be investment in oneself internally. It can be investment with oneself in an external world, in the world, in the environment that is around you, um, because we have the within en energy or the within experience, and we have the external experience, the environment that is around us. So I think for many of, of us, this is going to be different because the Queen of Pentacles has um, two different meanings that I really feel here, Virgo. The Queen of Pentacles is an energy that can um, help us be consistent and reliable and responsible and hardworking in in our the, act, the activities and the actions that we take um, to help bring in abundance and stability for us. They, the Queen of Pentacles can also um, be a focus on our own healing and our own health in our actual reality. So it is doing the things uh, that are necessary 
to make sure that we have quality food, to make sure that we have a safe place to find sanctuary within and to rest within, um, and to make sure that we're getting enough sleep. Um, so this is helping the mind and the body be healthy. Um, so there, there are um, some ener there are some energies here, some feelings here um, that I'm picking up on that are different. So some of you could be working on investing within the self and becoming um, and and adopting behaviors and creating habits that are healthy, which revolves usually around peace of mind, quieting the mind, understanding the power of the mind and what the brain does for us, and also um, helping the body to find sus um, sustaining energy, which which means that each and every one of our bodies are different, but there are, there are certain foods um, that are best for each and every one of us. Um, so my body is going to be different um, than the next person's body. If you can look at my hands and how I'm built, you can see that my body has different needs um, than another person's body. You will notice your hands look different than mine. So we're all different and it's nothing that we um, need to judge of one another, but it is something of importance that I myself am learning and many of us here on the earth plane are learning um, during our journey. So there could be an, a, a focus now on bringing health um, and, and behaviors into, um, into your walk, into your walk of life. And for some of you, this is um, creating investments and training um, and learning new, um, new, new, new information. This could also be in planning and creating um, systems for future monies or for future return of investment. Um, so this could be a very much business-like kind of energy here um, with, the, with the Seven of Pentacles and the Queen of Pentacles. So there are two groups of you here that I feel that are going to resonate with this, with this message that's coming out today. Now we have the tower here, which is an ener energy that will take you to a new place of understanding. The tower is an energy that helps us find a new way of looking at things. So while we sometimes think of the tower as a surprise, or sometimes we can think of it um, as something that um, comes in quickly and creates a situation um, that we will need to spring back from, that we will need to bounce back from, um, it could maybe send us into a place of um, crisis, if if that is meant for us, if that's what the universe has in store for us, or if that's what our guidance system or our religious belief system has in store for us, um, that could be the case here. But I think for many for many people here, this is a um, occurrence that is is here in, in the spread that will help in one way or another find the answers, find the information, and find the pathway to end something that you have been working on for quite some time, to end something that has been quite overwhelming for you with the Ten of Wands. So oftentimes we say um, that the tower is, um, when we look back at the tower, when we look back at this event that causes us to have um, epiphanies, that causes us to have um, changes in the way that we think about ourselves and the way that we think about our world and ultimately what we think becomes an action. So um, the tower oftentimes, from my perspective, can affect the mind. It can affect the thoughts. It can affect how we think about the world around us and we, how we think about ourselves. And then when we think things and we begin to believe them, we can then change our behaviors, which is the Ten of Wands energy. The Ten of Wands energy is about action. It's about, it's about taking action. Um, it's about the things that we do. It's about the decisions that we make. In, in our life. And with the Ten of Wands, I do feel like there has been a situation here for this group of people that has been very difficult. Um, you could have been really not knowing how to move forward anymore, um, that life um, is, is pretty heavy, and that in a way, um, if, if you think of a, a pregnant person, a pregnant lady um, who is at the end of her pregnancy, um, 
she might have feared labor. She might have feared the birth of a child. But when it gets down to the point of it, when it gets down to the time when she's supposed to have the child, um, what happens then? That's the Ten of Wands energy where um, she says, you know what? I'm going to go into this because I can't stand this anymore. I, I am big. I can feel the heartbeat and the movement of the baby within. And um, where I might have feared the changes in my body and the baby to move through me in a way that I can't fathom and have my bones separate um, and have a child come out from within me. Now it becomes something that she's able to do because she's ready now because this feeling of the Ten of Wands. And I know that might have been a graphic um, image, but today we live in a graphic world. So I think it is understandable for me to speak about it that way because that is a Ten of Wands energy. And it is a, um, I think for many of you, because many of the viewers are female, that you um, could understand that analogy. Um, so with the tower um, that's here, it, it, this tower may have been something that, have, have, that has already happened to you, or it may be something that you're going through now. Um, but from my perspective, from the tower energy, it usually, um, and it, and, and that is my understanding that it will release you from something once you have clarity around it, or once it begins to calm down. So um, it, it is something that can be difficult. Um, I like the fact that the Seven of Pentacles is here. This is telling me that you're taking time to plan and be grounded in this experience, to be to be calm and be connected in um, with, with a sense of balance um, with the Seven of Pentacles. And then we have the Queen of Pentacles here. This tells me that you're going to be able to step through this because the Queen of Pentacles, I think, more than any other sign, can really make her way through um, a rough situation because she knows how to put one foot in front of the other. She knows how to do this. She can do this and she can persevere through this. So uh, she can also do this and she can um, really help herself by taking care of her health. So um, this is a group of people that are going through something right now. They're experiencing change in their environment and this changes their internal structure, how they feel internally within themselves. It creates um, clarity of mind. And then when we have that clarity of mind and we have that change within the heart center, or, or different factions that are uh, um, transforming and changing within us, the world around us can begin to adopt that and, can, and we can make changes in the world that we live in so that we can now move forward in a much lighter way um, in, in our journey. So <clears throat> let's go ahead now and move into the future to see what the next phase of this is going to be. So we have the Six of Swords here. We have the High Priestess energy. We have the Ten of Cups energy. We have the Justice energy. We have Seven of Wands here. Sorry, I realize the camera is moving because um, my table moves. And when I work, um, when I'm doing these readings, I, I know that you can't see me and maybe some of you can tell, but I do rock back and forth. And that is something that many um, people do when they do this kind of work. So please be patient if the table moves or if the camera moves. It's because um, that's how I work and that's how I let this information flow through me. Um, I'll back up a little bit here so that I'm not touching the table so much, but please be patient. I know it can make you dizzy if I do it too much. All right, so if we have the Six of Swords here, um, the Six of Swords is um, at the beginning, and then we have the High Priestess energy with the Ten of Cups energy next to the Justice energy. Then we have the Seven of Wands with the Seven of Cups next to the Ace of Swords. So let me go ahead and, and get into this reading. I'm going to start with the Six of Swords. Now, the Six of Swords is an energy of moving forward um, from some sort of confusion, moving forward from maybe even a conflict that you've been in. Um, remember, the, the number that comes before the Sixes are the Fives, and the Fives are energies that initiate change or they force a change to happen. So with the Six of Swords, 
it, it does feel like you've now found clarity in this situation um, and you are able now to find not only clarity, but peace of mind as you move forward. So you have a um, a more peaceful feeling and it might not be peaceful in, in the way we have thought of peace between countries or peace between neighbors, but it is peace within the self. It brings you to a balanced place um, so that when you are in your canoe on the river, um, that you can sit there calmly and in a balanced way so that the canoe isn't tipping back and forth. Because if we're not balanced on our river, if we're not balanced in the canoe, we can easily um, fall out of it because we can be reaching here and there. We could be nervous about what we're doing and that canoe can start wibble wobbling back and forth. And all of a sudden we find ourselves in the river itself. So um, what, what it feels like to me is that you have found a sense of balance now and that and that clarity and that logic within the mind has helped you find that balance. And that is important to have um, clarity of mind. It's, it's important to know the value of our thoughts and, the, and, the, and how important it is to have a strong mind. Um, it doesn't have to be strong um, per se, if you have an idea of what strong is. Um, I, I'm trying to say this in a way that it fits. Um, that you will have a, a mind that is meant only for you to work in the best way possible for you because you are um, a precious being um, to the universe and to your religious system. You are a precious being and your mind has been constructed and created just how it's supposed to be just for you. So it, this is going to be different for, for everyone, but this tells me that there is a peace of mind here and there is balance here. Um, so that you can move forward in a different kind of a way than maybe you were before. Now, the Seven of Wands is over the top of the Six of Swords. So I feel here for Virgo that you um, probably have something that you're wanting to say. You probably have something that's on your mind, or you are um, taking action now to create um, a safe haven for yourself, um, whether this is in expressing um, that you're you know, a lot of people are doing this now at this time where they're saying, um, I am an older person. I need to be careful so that I don't get sick. So um, instead of coming over, why don't we talk on the phone for a couple of weeks? Uh, why don't we FaceTime for a couple of weeks? Um, because I need to make sure that I'm healthy um, in a way that is comfortable for me. Now, each and every one of us are different. Some of some people don't um, aren't as concerned about being healthy, about how, um, see, it's easy to say the wrong thing when you're a reader. And so that's why I'm being very careful. Um, and that's a focus that I have um, been working on in my work, uh, Virgo. And that's why you haven't heard from me for a few weeks. I've been leveling up um, in my work with the tool of tarot. So you're going to probably feel a little bit different um, or hear a little bit different um, kind of a reading from me. Um, but this is about creating boundaries for, for oneself. And what do we mean by that? We mean by that being able to express our thoughts. But before we can express our thoughts, it's important for us to know what is healthy for us or not. Is it healthy for us to say yes to everything? Is it healthy for us to say no to everything? Is it healthy for us to know what we really like? Or should we just think that we would like everything? Um, is it healthy for us to think that we don't like anything? So this is about finding balance in our preferences. And then once we know what our preferences are, being able to express that in a way that doesn't offend people, that it doesn't hurt people, but that it helps us find our own kind of sanctuary in our life. What is healthy for us and helps us be strong and, and vibrant in our, in our experience. So with the seven of wands over the top of the six of swords, it tells me um, that there is something that you are working on here to create a safe place for yourself or a, a safety zone for yourself. Um, it doesn't have to be a safety zone, but it's something, whether it's in your workplace or at home or within your um, any any kind of experience that you're having, that you have the um, that you have the strength to say what you need to say so that um, you experience this journey um, in, in the most healthy way for yourself. So um, whatever this is for yourself, this is being able to advocate, to be able to be an advocate for your own self. 
You could be being an advocate for other people as well. You could be reaching out and being an advocate for your parents or for your family or for your workplace or for your country. But in some way or another, you have found clarity around what this is for you and you're able now to be an advocate for whatever um, the topic is or whatever the situation is. The Seven of Wands is also on top of the High Priestess, which is telling me that um, you are having some sort of a um, you are working on wh what exactly to express. Um, there is something here that you have a knowledge of within. You have a connection into your guidance system, your religious system. Um, you have a connection into yourself, to the compass of who you are. This is talking about intuition. It's also talking about being balanced and being able to know what is important to say and what is important to not say because we can create um, a lot of um, beautiful experiences with the words that we say, and we can also create um, a lot of chaos with the words that we say. And we have seen this in the media, we have seen this in the community, and we have seen this all around us. We have even witnessed each and, I have been saying this each and every one of us, and I'm not sure exactly why um, I keep saying that, but I think, Every one of us have been in the position where we've said something and then afterwards we thought, why, why did I say that? Why did I have to say all that? And sometimes it's in the experience of realizing that, that we learn. Um, and if we haven't experienced it, then it's really hard to learn, um, isn't it? So when we speak without um, um, being careful or being mindful of what we're saying, sometimes we can create situations that we didn't intend to create or that um, it, that we um, had not meant to create. The high priestess energy, though, is a is an energy of being able to do this, is being being able to handle um, the being able to handle um, how you feel about what you would like to express. So I really like that the high priestess is here. This tells me that you're understanding that it's important for you to express yourself and to create sanctuary for yourself in some way or another, but that not everything is needing to be said, that you have a, a balance here, um, that you have a guidance system um, and um, a feeling within you or a connection to your um, higher power or a connection to um, your religion or whatever you believe in that's helping you to stay calm and to, to allow yourself to um, be connected with that, um, find um, healing and strength within that so that you can um, speak whatever you need to without um, stepping forward in a way that could create a, a situation um, that could bring more chaos into, into the community or into your home. So this has been a somewhat of a slow energy, Virgo, um, but these, th this, what, what I'm sinking into here is something that maybe goes deeper. Um, and, and if you are finding yourself becoming impatient now with this information, um, I'll try to move a little faster now, but it also is going to resonate and be very helpful for, um, whomever is meant to receive this message. And this is another thing that I'm learning is to have confidence in the messages that come through and to have confidence in the way that they come through. So um, I am learning how to um, release my own sense of control over the readings as well. So um, we do have the seven of cups here in the middle of the bottom row. And for me, the middle um, card of the bottom row is always significant for me uh, for some reason. Um, each reader has their own way of, of finding importance or significance in certain energies. But it tells me that um, you could be really um, having to choose about which way to go or how to do something. This doesn't always have to do with, uh, with a job or a major decision. Um, it could have to do with what to do in a situation, what to do within among family, what to do among family members or friends or among people, or even situations where you can um, bring in 
um, a sense of togetherness, a sense of family, a sense of a happy home. Um, because sometimes we have to sit back and realize that maybe there are other people around us that feel differently than we do and that they might have different perspectives than we have. And sometimes that's really hard um, to to accept that, especially when it has to do with even with something that goes quite deep, um, like a religion or a belief system or something of that of that kind of a depth, because I am feeling for for some of you that this could be a very deep situation. Um, Virgos can go very deep and they can become very logical and they can think much more slowly, um, just like um, Aquarius is are like I'm an Aquarius and um, I often feel like there is a similarity between a Virgo and Aquarius in this way because it takes me quite some time. When I am um, downloading information or receiving an epiphany, sometimes I have to stop and say, okay, okay, let me think about that for a while. And it's almost like I go dead inside or my brain stops and I have to absorb the information. And then I say, okay, now we can move forward and now let me receive the rest of this. That's kind of how I do. And that's almost like this feels to me. So this this high priestess energy that you're in, Virgo, um, you could be really trying to figure out how do I um, create this create this situation or co-create this situation um, in my in my circle, whatever that circle is, a circle of people, so circle of family, circle of um, of community. How do I do this so that I can bring in this harmony? and this and this family kind of a feel it does look like now in the future there will will be some kind of a communication or or a decision um, or even a a feeling of um understanding what to do um, and that will bring in a more balanced experience here so whatever whatever this is for this group of virgos uh, i think that you could have been pushed um, or you could be pushed quite significantly um, within something that could really cause you to question or cause you to um, be at a point where you just don't know what to do. You don't know what to do with the situation. It could be quite significant for you as far as maybe it's not something that comes in and takes your home away or anything like that. It could be something that comes in that impacts your belief system or impacts how you feel about a family member or how you feel about a religious organization. The tower doesn't always have to be the image of a castle crumbling to the ground. It can be a belief system being challenged or a way a perspective that's being challenged or a political view that's being challenged um, whatever he, that is here um, that has put you in a place of not knowing what to do about it um, I feel like um, this this sense of balance that you have now is going to help you um, in understanding um, how best to move forward to bring peace and harmony back in this situation and it looks like there's either going to be a communication here or a realization or some kind of decision that you're going to make, I can't tell you what that is because we're looking at a general energy. So there is going to be a little bit of homework here, but I can tell you that it does look like there is going to be some, some sort of a, of a, um, I want to say victory energy. And I, I feel like the word victory is wrong, but it is going to be some sort of a solution. There we go. Solution is coming through. So there is some sort of a solution that you come up with that's going to be fair for both sides of this. Because when you have the tower um, next to the Ten of Wands, it, it makes me feel like there's two sides to the story. Um, there's two sides to this or two parts of this or something that is um, that is more than one one side, one perspective. So it looks like you're going to find balance here. Um, there is going to be maybe a decision that's made or a communication that is that is going to be taking place that is going to help um, make this um, even a win-win situation or, or help um, this situation come out into a place or, or resolve into a place that uh, makes both parties or makes both um, um, energies that feel differently it brings peace and harmony back into into the into the um, environment that it has um, really affected. 
So I know that these words are coming out um, slowly and they're, it's, a, it's a deep energy. It has a lot of depth to it, um, but it does feel like there is going to be a solution here. You're going to work yourself through a solution. This solution is over the top of the Ten of Cups. This tells me that there will be a, a healing. There will be relief. There will be happiness and a togetherness here again with the Ten of Cups, almost like that rainbow that so many of us know is a promise of a better day to come. Um, with the justice energy, it is an energy of balance, um, an energy of, of, well, you know, what's interesting is we have two victory energies, don't we? But I, I'm getting the feeling that this is, um, that we need, when we say the word victory, we need to pull back a little bit and realize that could be, that could be our egos. Um, I've had to work on the ego lately and it's not fun to do that. Um, but it is necessary sometimes that, um, maybe these, this is two people, or this could be even a mother and daughter, or um, two family members, or two workplace co-workers um, having um, two different ways of thinking, and they could have butted up against each other, and it could have really affected the whole workforce, or it could have affected the whole family, or the whole community in, in a bigger way than, than one would have expected it to. Uh, so we have to be careful to not use the word victory all the time. We can use the word balance and we can use the word um, resolution or the word compromise. Um, these are more realistic um, from my experiences with um, justice energy, with the court system, that usually the court system will find some sort of balance um, between both sides. And I think this is the energy that we see here, that there is going to be a resolution, there's going to be a solution, um, there's going to be something here that brings in um, a, an energy of, of um, completion of this situation. Um, so I, I really like this trajectory, Virgo, and it might be, um, it might take you a little time to move through this, but that's okay. That's okay to do this because when we have the Ten of Cups here, it tells me that there is going to be um, a, a new day here and, and what the work that you're doing, and I feel like probably um, both sides of this are doing or both because with there has to be something that creates a tower. If there's not an opposing force, there would be no tower. So there's some sort of opposing force here. And I think in this reading, there's going to be a solution that comes forward that helps both sides find um, a sense of balance and a sense of peace around whatever this situation was. So let's go ahead and look at the guidance now. Okay, we have the Four of Wands next to the Hanged Man, next to the King of Swords. So we have the Four of Wands here. Let's start with the Four of Wands. The Four of Wands is an energy of, and remember, this is guidance now, so I'm going to allow um, the energy to flow just a little bit easier now, um, because when this kind of, when I can open up just a little bit more, the energies will flow, um, because that, those, that situation is a, a deeper situation and it takes a little bit more energy. So I'm going to flow a little differently here. So you're going to see a, a change of energy. Um, the four of wands is an energy of, of creating a home, creating a home or a workplace or some sort of a, 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 a stable shelter. Um, when you think of a shelter, it doesn't have to be four walls. It can be a, a feeling. It can be um, an agreement that you have between two people or between a workplace. It can have, it can be, um, it can be a union. Right, a union that helps workers stay feel safe and stay safe um, within an employment system. Right, the the four of wands. Sometimes we have a viewpoint that is just one thing, but it can be um, many different things. What I'm getting at is this is talking about creating some kind of a home um, where you find yourself resting within or find yourself enjoying yourself within. It does have to do with our own stability within our family or within our workplace or within our community. So there is a focus now on bringing new stability in because we realize that we have a tree here that's holding up this home. 
And we realize that if one of these branches breaks, what will happen to this home? That this tree, woo, this is a very cool analogy that's affecting me. <laughs> that this tree is important to have all the branches. And for some reason, in this situation for yourself that you are one of these branches and there might be an opposing force that's another branch and if you if your branch was to come crumbling out of this structure what would happen to this home and what if your branch fell out of this home and there was another branch that was impacted by this so if this branch broke then wouldn't a lot of the weight go onto this branch and then what would happen to this branch? And then all of a sudden, so that's that's what we're talking about with the four of wands, that there's four wands, that there's not just one, that there are multiple um, important facets to this construction, to this shelter. And one without the other struggles to, be, to achieve success. One without the other struggles to achieve um, a feeling of sanctuary. So it is important to nurture every limb of this tree and understand the importance of every limb. And when we do that, when we understand the importance of each and every person or each energy within a system, understand the importance of that and take time to make sure that each and every one of these tree, tree limbs are healthy, um, that will help the structure of this home um, be um, solid for for many years to come so that is um, a lesson that is coming forward now from um, spirit that helps us understand um, how important family is how important it is to take care of one another how important it is to nurture um, our families and our workplaces and the people around us and nurture the earth um, because it is also a four of wands when you think about the earth the earth is a four of wands um, it, to nurture to to understand um, all of all of what goes into a a um, foundation and to nurture those elements of it um, so that is the guidance coming forward from the four of wands with the hangman energy this is an energy of seeing things from a different perspective and uh, we're going to stick now with the meaning of this the meaning of this energy and not go too deep into this energy um, because if i do it too long i won't be able to read very long today because i will um be done after this reading uh, and not be able to do the extended even so i have to be careful and manage my energy but there there is a, um, a hanged man here which talks about really stopping to pause now to pause now and be able to look at things from a different perspective and um that when we have the four of wands and we have a tower that everyone if this is going to work well everyone should be able to or hopefully is able to um, do this at some point um, I, I feel like this is an energy that is careful. This is an energy here in this reading. This is a group of people that are very concerned about the shelter and about the four of wands and about the tower and about the other people or the other situation here. And I think that they really want to um, make a difference and to, and to see things um, from a different way. And I, I think there has been some sort of a pause here and that there might be a pause here um, where people kind of take a break um, just like the world is coming to uh, a pause now where we can all look and see things maybe a different way and we can notice um, how much we travel and how much we can influence each other and how much countries are connected and how much um, food is connected and how medicine is all connected. We can see our world from a different perspective that it is a much smaller place. And then maybe we can think about who... We can think about violence and we can think about bullets and bombs. And how they can affect our fellow man and woman and child. So this is about perspective. We do have the King of Swords here. So while we can get deep into these energies of the Four of Wands and deep into the energies of the Hanged Man, we also have to be careful that we can see things from a point of view that's going to be helpful for us. So the King of Swords is a energy that is a humanitarian. Um, this is an energy of looking at world systems, looking at humanity in a bigger from a bigger view. 
Um, I am an Aquarian, so I can take this perspective um, in a reading. Um, so that's probably why you're hearing this kind of a message from me. But this is also about making um, important decisions and understanding that you can only do so much Virgo. So if you are bending over, if you are giving too much, if you are looking at a perspective too deeply um, and not understanding that the other force, the other opposing force is not, then it's going to be important for you to make, to understand that and make a decision that is in your own best interest. Um, so this um, resolution is going to work if all the people or, or all the energies or all the situations are willing to negotiate, are willing to find a solution. One person cannot find a solution. A solution must be made between um, the group of people or between two people or between two, two, two different energies. There must be um, a willingness to negotiate. So be careful that you don't um, negotiate without a willing partner. There must be a willing partner. Um, and then be careful that you are able to see the big picture and that you're able to make a fair decision um, in this because what we would not want you to do is to overgive here to do something that um, is going to allow this other person or this other group um, to take and run with something that you have very kindly given and very kindly um, handed over um, to someone. So you have to make sure that the other person or the other energy is just as willing as you. And you have to almost realize, okay, how willing are they? How willing are they to bend? Because I want to understand how willing they are, because that's how I want it. That, see, this is hard. This is the kind of reading that's kind of hard. And this is how life can be really hard too, Virgo. Um, and this reading is going on and on. We're at 44 minutes. Um, that's okay. It's, it's going to flow here. Um, that you, it's, it's almost like, um, when the wind blows and you have a row of palm trees and the wind blows through a row of palm trees, is one palm tree bending farther than the other palm trees? Or is everyone bending, um, in the same, at the, at the same ratio or at the same scale. Um, so it's important to understand how far you will bend. If you're a palm tree and the other person is a palm tree, how far are you going to bend? Now it's really hard if you're a palm tree and the other person is an oak tree, you're going to bend in different ways. So you have to also take into consideration um, that um, you, you might be different kinds of kinds of trees. Now, we also have to realize that a palm tree can withstand a lot of wind and an oak tree, um, though the oak tree branches might break um, before the palm tree branches might break. So it, it's a complicated situation when you look at humanity, when you look at countries working together and different cultures working together and different people, even spouses working together, they are all going to be different kinds of trees. And we have to understand um, how these trees have been grown, what kind of land they live in. Are their root systems shallow in the earth so that if there's wind, the root system will come out and the tree will just topple right over while the palm tree can bend significantly in the wind. So this is an analogy that I'm bringing forward that um, I think you understand now that this can be a complicated situation. But um, what we also have realized now in this story that there must be some kind of wind, right? There must be some kind of wind. There must be some kind of five energy, change energy that's going to come through and create the wind so that the trees that are here can begin to bend so there can be some sort of resolution. If the wind only comes to the palm tree and doesn't hit the oak tree, then that will make a more difficult compromise and the palm tree might end up bending much more than the oak tree. So you must be careful that there is wind that is hitting all the parties here. Okay, that's the end of the guidance and um, I will move into the extended now. We'll look at the people who are around you and we'll take this situation out into the future to help you plan and to um, bring more guidance as you move forward. All right, Virgo, um, thank you very much for being here. It is a pleasure to read for you and I wish you all the very best, my friends. Thank you.